Congratulations, Scott Hughes. This is Clara Baker. We uh, So we're going to talk about two, two convenient ways to package beer from a keg. Uh, beer gun. That's one of the. Uh, that's the second method we've used in the past. We have the. Uh, I guess it might. According to Paul Schick, this may be the second version of it that came out. Uh, there's now a newer version than we have. Uh, a couple of upgrades. We'll look at the next picture here. And you can see the new beer gun. It comes in a hard plastic case. It, it comes with the hard, most of the hardware. You'll probably still need some to hook up to CO2. But um, it's got a new handle that's supposed to keep your hands warmer. Um, a new tip. And, and slightly new design that's supposed to um, be a little smoother so you don't get quite as much foaming action. Um, I got to just handle what somebody has got. And I thought it was a little funkier. Um, I do know that in the middle of winter, you know, bottling 32 degree beer, that beer gun does get cold. But I don't know, maybe that'll loosen up over time. I've only used and played with it the one time. It's the assault beer gun. Hopefully it's good. The assault beer gun. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's now $99 and it comes with the extra thing. The old one used to be about 70 bucks, and you had to pay $25 to get the tubing and some small amount of hardware. Um, the other one is picnic tab. Picnic tab. Uh, we use a basic picnic tab. We put a growler tube at the end of it. You can use your uh, little bottling bucket tube that comes with some kits. You can actually stick that one inside your picnic tap, but this one goes on the outside of the picnic tap. Um, and we're gonna demo, and, and we've used them both. So the process, clean. Make sure everything that's touching beer is clean. Uh, your bottles, your caps, your tubing, your beer gun, your picnic tap, whatever you're using. Uh, we use PBW and hot water. Bottle brush if the bottles need cleaned out a little bit more. You definitely don't want any crud in your bottles. Uh, wash them, clean them, rinse them. And then sanitize. Sanitize anything and everything that touches beer. The bottles, beer gun, picnic tap, caps. Um, we, we sanitize the little container we put our bottles in after the fact. Um, we've got caps soaking in there right now. Um, we use star sand using proper recommended concentration, which is one ounce per five gallons of water. Um, we also will either carbon filter our water or use uh, potassium metabisulfate before we add the star sand because we don't want any chlorine in there. And Cleveland water has various levels of chlorine. It can be kind of weird. Uh, so are you using uh, oxygen um, absorbing caps? Uh, we have them, okay. yes, but usually our beers are packaged and judged within three weeks, and yeah. I've heard it really doesn't matter. So you probably don't want to pre-soak those because as soon as they get wet, they start absorbing. Okay. Uh, commercial breweries don't. Just yeah, and that, uh, most of our caps are just your standard ones. Don't touch the middle with your finger any time. Cool. The oxygen Thank you. Yeah, the oxygen okay. absorbing, that's how they activate it. For, uh, otherwise, they'd be... Useless by the time right, they get real gummy. Right. Yeah, we, we, we have those that one time. Yeah. So oxygen absorbing caps, you may you don't want them to sit and sanitize it. So they want to use them. But they're sterile from, so the, from the get go. Um, so we let them just soak yeah. as commercial yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good to That's good enough. So um, contact time recommended <laughs> for star sand is one minute. So we make sure everything's in for a minute. Usually it goes a little bit longer, just because of the time it takes to do things. Don't, please, just don't dip, 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 and then move on. <laughs> cold, the cold. I love contact time to sanitize. The colder everything is, the better. Um, we usually have our beer around uh, 32 degrees. We just, you normally we carbonate about 32 degrees, and then we bottle soon after it's carbonated. So most of our competition beers we brew, they're ready to put into bottles about a week after they're carbonated. So everything's nice and chilly. You can... Show your bottles. Um, we've done that sometimes. Sometimes we just have them out in the garage. If it's a cold time of year, they're pretty cold anyway. Um, we keep them clean and then just have to sanitize. Uh, let's see. Set up the assembly line. Um, goal is to hook everything up and have everything in place to fill and cap as quickly as possible. 
So you, you, you want to fill and then move it to the capper right away. So we usually, one of us fills, one of us caps. And we just pass it over, boom, cap it up. Just have everything set up. Think it through before you start. So I'm going I'm to trade off the care now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the demo now, I guess. Yeah, just, just think it through. Just think through your process before, just like we're doing a lot of times. Think through your process and then, and then you can just crank these bottles out. It really can be a one-person process. Both of us have done it individually on our own both ways, uh, but it's quite easier with two. Um, oh, I did not touch anything. What did you do? All right. So I guess we're moving on. Yeah. Okay. Pick a tap first. Um, somebody else here tonight brought up a good point. That the size of your tubing, the size of the tubing that goes on to your picnic tap is not going to be the same size that's going to fit on the end of it. So we've made lots of mistakes by wrong size tubing, so we have plenty of tubing around. Um, yep, so comes off the sandy keg, run through the sandy, um, sanitizer in a keg. So we'll run sanitizer through um, our picnic tap line, then hook it up, run it off into a Dump bucket, put it in a little fill. Um, wait, no, it's on. You can see now. Yeah, why is this one not up? I'll Bottom make up. that one go I, I changed it back. Just hit either this arrow or this arrow. All right, cool. Awesome. So he's, well, with this one, we're not going to purge the bottle. Yeah, so didn't do it that time. we didn't do it that great. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, he's just filling it up. That's it. You just put the tube all the way at the bottom. You've probably seen a lot of bars do this with gravel fills. You want the tube all the way at the bottom. Keep the bottle at a little angle so you're filling up. It'll push all the gas up. It does decrease the amount of uh, oxygen you have in your beer. A little more turbulence than a beer gun, but boom, you're going to see a little bit of foam come up. The idea is to cap on foam. Sanitize cap. So I'm going to back up just a little bit. <laughs> um, so before he started pouring that beer, you're going to purge the keg. You don't want it running at the pressure that the keg is at for the beer to be carbonated. So you're going to back off to about 3 to 6 PSI. Just pull your top. Let me make sure. I know the process, but... Uh... So normally I would take the bottle and purge it with CO2. On that one, which was on the, the previous slide. Because we're ridiculous. But I've already got the CO2 line hooked up to the beer gun, so I don't have that to, to stick in there and do that. But I usually do it for anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. CO2 is a little denser. Um, that's where this one's yeah. off. It's off here. So CO2 is a little denser. It will lay on top. Oxygen will come on top of it. So even as you're filling the bottle, that's going to push oxygen out, leaving that little layer of CO2 even if you don't have a beer gun to top off on there. Um, yep, filling the bottle from the bottom up, and here's the cash. Too many mic drops over there. Or just Oh, it's fine. So, yeah. Jim, Jim made, a, Jay made a suggestion the other day to me, doing it this way, without, because I, I don't, at this point, have the setup to put CO2 in the bottle first. Yeah. And he made a suggestion, which I haven't tried yet, but I plan on doing it, is to tap the bottle and let it calm up on the cap it, yeah. pushing the air out and the yeah. CO2 up. Yep. Nope. Simply cap on foam. Waste another ounce of beer. So let that thing come up and out. No, it doesn't come out, it just goes to the top. That's just from breweries, from buddies we know, that's how they do it. And I'm like, what? And like, smack the bottom once it's full and it just goes foam, then cap right away as that foam pops right out. As long as you have foam on top, really? if you're filling from the bottom and you pull it out, you've got a gap at the top. Okay, I have absolutely no idea. Here's my theory. 
Okay. <laughs> good. No, it's all Here's my theory. Oh. It is that you are releasing here this uh, CO2 that's in solution out. Maybe a small amount. Maybe a small amount. But you you carbonated that beer to where you want it to be. Why are you going to want to make it lose carbonation now and affect that carbonation? So I would say lose the additional ounce of beer, push it out, boom, cap on the additional beer that's coming out, and it'll foam right over. Um, what What's happening that you're bottling and that you're not getting foam? When you pull the tube out, the foam that's at the top, your whole bottle... Down about an inch no. air on top. Mm -hmm. Keep keep going. <laughs> keep going. I, I there's a there's a fine touch you'll find. What whichever method the, the Blickman beer gun, I feel and I'll try to be fast. The Blickman beer gun is definitely better about the amount of tubing that's there that you pull out that typically allows you that headspace to and then you're putting CO2 in. Okay. But with a tube, there's a fine balance of pulling that out and still pouring in. You're full. Keep pouring out, keep pouring out, be done, put it down, put your cap on. Okay. Um, I would not pop them to, to okay. create CO2 release. Kara, Jim had a question in the back. Yeah. Uh, you can also, if, if you use the tube, use a piece of racking cane and you put it in the picnic tap instead of over. Okay. So, you know, you use a thin piece of racking cane. Yep. You said you can put it inside the racking yep. tube. If you run that through a number two or a number two and a half stop, a number two and a half, I'm sorry. Stopper. Yep. Right? Then you can put the stopper yep. on the top of the bottom. Yep. And as you fill, you can use your thumb to kind of control the fill rate a little bit. So it gives, plate. gives you just a little bit more control over your fill rate mm -hmm. uh, than, than the straight tube does. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're using a piece of racking cane, um, take the bottom of the piece of racking cane and put it at a slight angle. Uh, it helps reduce turbulence in the bottom. This is why I love the snobs, you guys. I mean, who's going to tell you to cut an angle on there? Okay. Absolutely. And that also goes into, right? Thank you, Jim. Yep. There, there's, there are five million ways to do this, too. And I, I, we, we welcome suggestions. We're gonna we're gonna get through like two slides here, and then we'll 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 chat about the other things. We're just gonna show you real quick our method of doing the beer gun. Um, you saw our picnic tap tap method. Like I said, normally we purge the tank uh, when we're purging with CO2. Um, one of the things that it, it is heavier than oxygen, so in theory it'll settle towards the bottom, displacing O2. But some mixing the gases do, does occur. You're not gonna get rid of all the oxygen. You're just stirring it up. Hopefully more of it settles, and then when you fill, fill beer and it comes up, it's still pushing more of it out. But you will still have oxygen in there. It's not, this is not in a completely enclosed environment. It, I mean, pressure, counterfill, fillers can do a slightly better job at that, but they tend to foam up more at the end. So you lose a little bit of your carbonation. Um, so one of the tips for that is to overcarbonate slightly. We usually overcarbonate our beer a little bit with the beer gun, um, just for that reason, because we know we're going to lose a tiny bit in the process. Um, overcarbonate, knowing we're going to use the beer. Yeah, so if we're looking for, if we want to have 2.5, we, we shoot for like 2.6 or 2.7, right around there, just a little slightly more. And it, they don't run as well on a jockey box, we found that out, but, and it takes a while to, to lower the carbonation, but anyway, back to Kara. So what Jim was saying is actually getting exactly into what we're talking about here. When we're talking about run the beer through the tubing to get flow. So he's going to, there you go, he's hitting it with CO2. One button is CO2. Boom. Then the other button is beer. Yeah, it's a lot more pieces parts, man. You started um, Yes, yeah, start it slow. Again, you're going to have off gas that keg to get to a low pressure. When we were kegging our Hefeweizen, that thing was down at like 2 PSI to push it because it was already like ridiculously carbonated. Other beers that are more low carbonation, so make it not take two hours to bottle, 40 bottles. So right there, he just hit that thing with CO2 right at the end. He filled it, pulled it out, hit it with CO2, capped. So instead of relying on pushing everything up with um, the 
pick and tap, you're actually getting um, a little cap off of CO2 there. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, with tra okay, so transfer, adjust the pressure, adjust on the fly. It's going to depend on how cold your beer is. It's going to depend on your carbonation level of your original beer. Um, goal is to minimize foaming by a slow speed. Again, it's one of those you'll suss it out. There's no set number. Um, you want to get low turbulence, keeping CO2 in solution, not popping it up. And um, so this gets into the dynamics of tube diameter and everything. So this can be helped a bit by longer, thinner beer lines. We can't see all this. Do I just push down? Yeah, no, that doesn't work. All right, well, we'll read it off the paper. How about that? All right, so many facts. Can be helped <laughs> by a longer, thinner beer lines, which provide a bit more resistance, but then you can't have it too long or too thin because then you start foaming in the tube. Um, yeah, run till the beer flows over the top and always cap on foam. <clears throat> also helps the chill the, mm -hmm. also helps to chill the bottles. Nice absolutely, that was in our first slide. Oh, Chill, yeah. Absolutely, you, well, you should be putting your, your bottles in cold sanit sanitizer anyway, which should be being made in the coldest cold water possible, not freezing, but sanitizer always works best cold. So it's, then you're just putting your bottles into this cold water you already have. But the idea is to not then let them sit on a 70 degree day and get all warm again. You want to really get that assembly line going, keep your bottles cold, and then we're pulling from a cold. We, we um, go to 32 before we bottle with our beers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, cap. Just generally, you guys, we've had some really sh caps <laughs> over time. You'll figure it out real quick, and it really sucks on a bottling day when you have no other options, and all of your caps are not sealing right. It, so give them, I don't know, give them a try. I, we always now, whenever we get a bag of them, give them a try on a few empty bottles before we plan on a bottling day, and then find out that our bag of bottles caps don't want to seal. Um, and then maintain your um, capper. This is a really great capper. We're really spoiled now. Um, but the red ones, the red plastic ones with the bells, those bells will go bad very quickly, especially if you leave them in sanitizer overnight. Um, don't take care of them, and then you don't want to have that rust feeling when, you know, that taste anywhere near your beer. Yeah, Tim. So what I do, and what I found out, if you can twist the cap on the bottle, oh, you're fine. that little cage is probably defective. Yep. So always try to twist the cap. Yep. If it moves. Shouldn't move at all. You're going to get oxygen or leakage, absolutely. And then Star Sand, Todd said Star Sand works better warm or hot. Yeah, chemically. Yeah, I was going to just say, Andrew, um, yeah, um, did, did a presentation on this, I believe, a year and a half ago or so. Um, and common come knowledge is, yeah, the, the caustics work better in warm, and your acid sanitizers are much better used in cold. Yeah, you can submerge your bottle in water. We always rinse our bottles. Hey, man, get class of snobs. I mean, if you're gonna bottle your, if you're gonna go to all this trouble to bottle your beer for competition, and you've let it foam over and everything else, will you please use some water, just some warm water, and rinse your bottle off? Pres presentation matters. He's saying it's a way to look for bubbling and CO2. You know, like leakage there. Good double check. Um, I typically go with Tim's method of the visual. You, and again, you'll get a feel. You know your capper. You know when it didn't sink right. You know when it didn't hit right. Then you're looking at your seal. You're making sure all your corners, all these guys should be down. If you've got one side or another, you've got a cap that's a little off kilter, get, get it off immediately. Hit it with a little more CO2, if that's your method, and then cap it again. We can go to the next next slide. So, oh, the last thing we left off is about cleaning. 
Uh, make sure you clean everything that touched beer before you put it away. Just makes it better next time. Plus you don't have things growing. You don't have to extra scrub and clean and worry that you didn't clean it. So clean it. Don't be lazy. Put it away. <laughs> um, comparison. Yeah, don't let it sit in star sand, especially tubing. Won't be good. Um, picnic tap, uh, comparison between the two. Picnic tap is cheap, about $15 or less. If you have one, you only need a short 10 to 12 inch piece of tubing. Um, easy to clean and sanitize for the most part. You gotta watch your tubing once it gets old, replace it, it's cheap. Uh, you can improve by using a longer, narrower bare line, but again, we mentioned that earlier. You know, you can reduce some turbulence, but you get too long and then it takes too long in there, it can warm up and other things. Um, you get a, we usually get a bit more spilled beer using the picnic tech, tech method, but if you use it in a clean container, you can drink it when you're done. Um, it, it's even purging it with CO2. Very, very foamy beers, a Hefeweizen. We've had two, two glasses of Hefeweizen in two bottles for competition. And because of slightly more turbulence, you're going to get, even if you purge with CO2, you'll get a little more dissolved oxygen pickup in there. Um, but we recommend them. We rec I mean, definitely recommend, especially if you're on a budget. It's going to adequately, quickly fill bottles and growlers and short-term storage and competitions. Um, we, we actually took an eight-month, eight or nine-month-old Pilsner this summer. We thought we had like maybe two or three pints left. It was still tasting good, we were drinking. We added on a picnic tap. We didn't want to take and lose the beer in the picnic tap and hook up the beer bot, the beer, uh, the beer gun and run it in. So we, we used the picnic tap method, filled three bottles. We got three bottles on the end of the keg. Bill. We tried to do four, but that spurred it out. And uh, entered Son of Brazil, got a gold medal for the Pilsner. So it, it's definitely a method that can work. It, and again, it only, was in the bottle for about four weeks because we had to empty that keg to fill it for another beer. So it's still four weeks and um, it held up really well. Um, so definitely something I would not shy away from if, if you don't want to spend $100 in a beer gun, um, which is what they cost. And I mentioned earlier, it includes a case tubing and hardware now. Still needs some CO2 fittings. Easy to clean, sanitize. It has more parts that you could possibly lose, but it's still pretty easy to break down and you can soak it in sanitizer and, and whatnot. Um, it's a consistent process, simple. In theory, helps to create less turbulence on fill and better CO2 with the, with the CO2 purging from the bottom. Um, and uh, we would definitely recommend that too. I mean, don't expect it to make better beer. <laughs> but if your beer's good, uh, in our opinion, a small reduction in dissolved oxygen in the bottle can't hurt anything. So it's, it's definitely going to help out. So we're going to do a... Anybody wants to do this, yeah, come on. Yeah, we're leaving this set up, so anybody that hasn't tried a beer gun or wants to try one, so simple, just just come up and put hands on. We'll even hook up the picnic tap if you want to try that one, if you're if you're not familiar with Kevin. What are you bottling? Uh, th this is an ESB that we brewed in uh, August, so it's old, it is oxidized. If you want to see what an oxidized beer tastes like, I mean, you're welcome to try it. It's just not our best, because it is old. We didn't drink it fast enough. We had 14 new beers for Son of Brazil, and we did not drink through them. So, so you're welcome to try it. I mean, it's, it's still not bad. I mean, the English ales actually hold up a lot better than anything American. That we've, we've. Time is up. Come up and try it.